Acts chapter 28, verse 1 to 6. Now when they had escaped, they then found out that the island was called Malta. And the natives showed us unusual kindness, for they kindled the fire and made us all welcome, because of the rain that was falling and because of the cold. But when Paul had gathered a bundle of sticks and laid them on the fire, a viper came out because of the heat and fastened on his hand. So when the natives saw the creature hanging from his hand, they said to one another, No doubt, this man is a murderer, whom though he has escaped the sea, yet justice does not allow to leave. But he shook the creature into the fire and suffered no harm. However, they were expecting that he would swell up or suddenly fall down dead. But after they had looked for a long time, and saw no harm come to him, they changed their minds and said that he was a god. From the passage we just read, Paul, born of God's spirit, born of the essence of God, was on a mission to Rome. And in the midst of that same godly mission that God had given to him, encountered storms. He stood as a prophetic voice in the crisis. He began to speak to the people who were going through crisis. Out of fear, many of the people there did not eat. They were in fasting, but they were afraid. When fear comes into your life, fear begins to direct your thoughts, your words, and your actions. But the Bible tells me that there is no fear in love because perfect love casts out all fear. If you're born of God and born of God's spirit... And you know that the one that watches you neither sleeps nor slumber, no matter what you're going through, you can be expectant to say that I know, like Job, that my Redeemer lives. Faith is not the absence of crisis. It is the ability to navigate the deadly storms risen against you. Faith is not the absence of problems but the capacity to overlook the problems and looking on to Jesus, the author and finisher of your faith. Sometimes the crises that God allows in our lives are the crises that he directs sometimes to allow us grow from glory to glory. Because if you want to know the true quality of a gold or a precious stone, it has to go through the fire. I don't know if there's someone in this place, maybe you're going through crises and you're saying, I, I can't stand this. Let me remind you before you train the towel that God is not going to give you anything that you are not able to overcome. If there is crisis in your life, if there is a problem in your life, it's because God has looked for a way of escape. If there is a building on fire, wise people, the first thing they do before they start panicking, they look for the escape routes. That's why anytime you want to travel, the usual practice of the aircraft, they'll tell you, in the case of emergency, try to locate emergency exits. There are things in our lives, places, God has given us the ability to come out of every pain. If you're going through depression, there is an, a spiritual exit route for you. If you're going through crisis, there is a spiritual way out for you. If you're going through poverty, there is a spiritual way out for you. For the fact that you've not seen it does not mean it does not exist. That means... There is no temptation that has overtaken you that God has not prepared a way for. A way that you can overcome it. A way that you can move beyond it and move to the next level of glory. There, there are times there is a wrong misconception we have that because you are born again and you are a man of God and because you have the anointing of God, you can get into trouble. That's not true. Sometimes it is this very anointing that you carry that can get you into trouble. Jesus, full of the Holy Spirit, was not led into the wilderness to be tempted by the devil. He was not led by the spirit of Satan to be tempted. He was led by the Holy Spirit. So sometimes the Holy Spirit you carry, the anointing you carry can get you into trouble. But it is what I call good trouble. Because you're going to come out of all the crises you're going through. Because any trouble God allows in your life is a trouble that he has calculated in the spirit realm to make you grow. To make you wiser. 
to make you stronger, to make you better, to make you more refined. So when you're going through your crisis, don't complain. The Bible tells me, in despite it all, count it all joy. You can't say, Bishop Tony, you're telling me things because you don't know what I'm going through. Oh, come on, don't tell me about crisis. I live with crisis all my life. But crisis does not define me. Crisis helps me to fulfill my destiny. The Bible didn't tell you that the path's going to be easy. The Bible didn't tell you that the path's going to be all smooth. The Bible even tells us that many, not some, not few, many are the afflictions of the righteous, but God delivers him from them all. And I don't know what you're going through, but I came to tell you with a prophetic apostolic word in my spirit, telling you that irrespective of what you're going through, irrespective of the pain you're going through, irrespective of everything you're going through, don't give up, don't throw in the towel. Help is coming because I look up to the hills from when comes my help. Your help is coming. It's coming from the, from the throne room of God. Help is coming. You will overcome that sickness. You will overcome that pain. You will overcome that discouragement. Help is coming. Because if God be for us, who can be against us? So he was Paul. Fulfilling his prophetic destiny. And the crisis came. Don't tell me because you're following the will of God that crisis is not going to come. The devil fights what he fears. The will of God that God has given you to fulfill is what scares the devil. So the devil is going to bite you. It's going to bark, but he can't bite you. Even when he tries everything he does against you, it's not going to stand because God is for you. And if God is for you, no one can stand against you. The Bible tells me that they can come against you in one way and flee in seven different ways. So he went through crisis, and the next thing, as soon as that crisis was over, he was a man who overcame turbulence. For close to 30 days, they were at sea, under the impact of a deadly hurricane. And the ship got wrecked. Paul, before the ship got wrecked, he stood as a prophetic voice. He said, no one life is going to be lost. That's why you need to be careful about the people you walk with, the people you call your friends. Because if you fellowship with people who have the wrong spirit, then death is going to come knocking at your door. But if you walk with the anointed people, because of the anointed ones, God is going to spare your home. God is going to spare your family. God is going to spare your business. If you walk with the anointed one, Jesus himself, God is going to spare you. Because the Bible tells me that he that dwells in the secret place of the Most High shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. There is something that follows the children of God. Goodness follows us. Mercy follows us. Protection follows us. That God goes ahead of us in the daytime, in a pillar of cloud, and in the nighttime, in a pillar of fire. He surrounds his ministers with flames of fire. You may not look holy. You may not sound holy. You may not look spiritual. But I tell you that because you have called upon the name of Jesus salvation is coming financial salvation is coming moral salvation is coming spiritual salvation is coming everything that has to do with salvation is coming salvation means everything that pertains to life and godliness no sooner had he come out of that crisis another one came God permits trials in our lives to mold, make and perfect our destinies Adversity is a test of character while character births destiny. Acts chapter 14 verse 22. Strengthening the souls of the disciples, exhorting them to continue in the faith and saying, we must through many tribulations enter the kingdom of God. Satan attacks believers to frustrate God's divine plan and purpose for individuals, families, people, and nations as a result of the seed of righteousness which they have. The enemy attacked Paul to stop him from getting to his destination, Rome. What is your destination? If starting the journey is not the problem, but ending the journey is the problem, the devil attacks to stop you from getting to your destination. There is a reason why the devil attacks believers, because we carry the seed of the woman. When man fell as a result of disobedience, God redeemed humanity with a salvation plan through the seed of the woman. The Bible tells me in the book of Genesis chapter 3, verse 13 to 15. 
And the Lord God said to the woman, What is this you've done? The woman said, The serpent deceived me, and I ate. And so the Lord God said to the serpent, Because you have done this, you cursed more than all cattle and more than every beast of the field. On your belly you shall go, and you shall eat dust all the days of your life. And I'll put enmity between you and the woman, and between your seed and her seed. He shall bruise your head, and you shall bruise his heel. Have you seen a serpent that eats dust? Oh, come on, talk to me. Have you seen a serpent that eats dust? No, serpents don't eat dust. We're talking God was referring to a spiritual serpent that eats dust. You came from dust, and to, to dust shall you return. So the destiny of the spiritual serpent is to feed on your destiny. Is to feed on you. Is to feed in her. And one way he does that is to feed on your vices. If you're very carnal, then you become food for the devil. If you become very carnal, you become food for demons. If you're very carnal, you become food for the enemy. There are some sicknesses that doctors don't have solutions to. Why? When the devil begins to feed on your destiny, he afflicts your body. He destroys your body. He destroys your mind in order to make sure that your soul is defeated. But if you resist the devil, he's going to flee away from you. As long as you walk with Christ Jesus, you are a mortal enemy of the devil. And he's going to fight you. Make no mistake about that. If you're a believer and the devil is not fighting you and the devil does not tremble and when it comes to your business and the devil does not attack you, that means you are probably on the devil's side. Because you can't be doing something that is contrary to his kingdom and doing something that is contrary, that is bringing problems to the dark forces without the devil attacking you. Because of the seed of righteousness which we carry, we became mortal enemies of the devil. Revelation chapter 12 verse 17. And the dragon was enraged. Why was the dragon enraged? You know, being enraged, that means it's the highest form of being angry. And the dragon was enraged with the woman. And he went to make war with the rest of her offspring. Who keep the commandments of God and have the testimony of Jesus Christ. The reason the devil is enraged against your business, coming like a storm, coming like a flood, is because you keep the commandments of God. Because you have a relationship with God. The reason the devil is enraged and trying to destroy your business, destroy your political life, destroy everything, is because you keep the commandment of God. But I came this last day to declare that someone under the influence of the sound of my voice, that my God fights for you. The Bible tells me that many are the afflicted of the righteous, but God delivers him from them all. I declare that this year, God will take you to the next level of glory in the mighty name of Jesus. Every demonic conspiracy, every demonic enchantment, every incantation, every spell, every divination against you shall not stand in the mighty name of Jesus. My God will send divine smile. My God will send such smile. Every guardian against you shall come to naught in the mighty name of Jesus. Even if you take deadly poison it shall not harm you you will step upon snakes and scorpions and nothing but shall any means harm you because you carry the seed of righteousness every handwriting of death against you by the finger of God I declare that it has come to an end in the mighty name of Jesus I shut the gates of Hades against you I shut the gates of hell against you I shut the gates of death against you look at two three people and tell them that this is my time I will not die but leave to declare the glory of God I will not die, but live to declare the glory of God. You will not die, but live to declare the glory of God. Your business will not die, but live to declare the glory of God. Your houses, your members of your houses, members of your family, members of your, your clan, none of them will die, but they will live to declare the glory of God. The Bible tells me in the book of Romans 16.20, and the God of peace, say the God of peace. If you don't have peace, your life is going to be in pieces. And the God of peace will crush Satan under your feet shortly. 
The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ be with you. Amen. So the God of peace is fighting your battle. The God of peace is securing your territory. The God of peace is about to crush the devil under your feet. If you believe that, shout hallelujah. The Bible tells me in the book of Revelation eleven seventeen, we give you thanks, O Lord God Almighty, the one who is and who was and who is to come, because you have taken your great power and reigned. How great is this seed we carry? You can't stop the seed. You can't kill the seed. When Abel was killed, the devil rejoiced. He thought that that was going to be the end of the seed. You know, when you kill the seed, you actually give life to the seed. Because unless the seed dies and falls to the ground, it has no life. That is the spiritual mathematics that the devil has gotten wrong. Anytime you kill a godly seed, it multiplies itself. So from Cain, when Cain killed the seed, they thought that was the end. But the seed survived. And Noah preserved the seed. Eight of them were preserved. Abraham separated the seed from the tares. Jesus purified and multiplied the seed. The church, you are part of the church. The church is the harvested seed that we harvest the earth. Hallelujah. Say, I am the seed of righteousness. You are the seed of righteousness. If you believe that, shout hallelujah. The Bible tells me in the book of Galatians 3, 29. And if you are Christ, then you are Abraham's seed and heirs according to the promise. Hallelujah. That means if you are in Christ, you are Abraham's seed. And everything that pertains to life and godliness will be upon you. We are the manifestation of the promises that God made to Abraham. He said you shall be the head and not the tail. You shall have good life and long life. You shall have favor and grace will follow you. Tell your neighbor, say, I am part of that seed. If you are in Christ, goodness is your portion. If you are in Christ, wealth is your portion. If you are in Christ, favor is your portion. If you are in Christ, leadership is your portion. If you are in Christ, all the good things will come to you. Look at someone and say, this is my time. I will step into new dimension of faith. Step into new dimensions of glory. Step into new, new dimension of power. If you believe that, shout hallelujah. You are not meant to be inferior. You are meant to be the head and not the tail. Let the devil come against you. His attacks will not stand. Let him attack. If God is for you, no one will be able to defeat you. Hallelujah. Those who are for us are more than those who are against us. We will overcome. We will overcome every storm. We will overcome every crisis. We will overcome every pain. Because my God and your God is a supernatural God. You cannot defeat the lion of the tribe of Judah. You cannot defeat the conqueror of humanity. You cannot defeat the creator of heaven and earth. He is the Alpha and Omega. Before the beginning began, he began the beginning and started the start before the start. Even God started. That is the God that we serve. He will fight for you. He will promote you. He will take you to the next level of glory and power. Don't be afraid. He didn't say trials will not come. He said, despite it all, in all these, we are modern conquerors. How would you know you're a conqueror if you've not been in a battlefield? How would you know? How would you appreciate God's gift of life if you've not seen, if you've not smelled the treasury of death? How would you know? But in all these, we are more than conquerors. There are three main areas the devil loves to attack. One, the mind. When Paul was going through the crisis, the minds of all the people who were going through the storm were messed up. They couldn't even eat. But Paul had the mind of Christ. His mind was connected to Christ. And that way he was able to get a revelation. And he told the people that the God that I serve sent an angel and gave me assurance in the midst of my crisis that no lives will be lost. 
Man of God, have you heard from God? What did God tell you? God told me to tell team members that none of you will be defeated. None of you will be put down. None of you will be crushed. Every one of you, as long as you believe in God, victory is yours. Promotion is yours. Power is yours. If you believe that, shout hallelujah. Man of God, what did God tell you? God told me to tell you, don't cancel your dreams because of coronavirus. Go back to the drawing board. Establish your business. Establish your territory. Build your houses and glorify Jesus because Jesus Christ is coming soon. He's not coming for a nation of losers. He's coming for a nation of kings and conquerors. And you are a nation of kings and conquerors. It's your time to shine. What did God tell you, man of God? God told me to tell you that the same flood that killed the world and the same flood was the flood that lifted up Noah. Everything that is going to destroy the ordinary man is what is going to be for your promotion in the mighty name of Jesus. Man of God, what did God tell you? While the coronavirus is messing up unbelievers, this same virus will lead to your promotion in the mighty name of Jesus. It is your time to shine. It is your time to take territory. It is your time to recover. It is your time to experience your business because my savior and your king is coming soon the mind it is a battleground between the agents of good and the forces of evil success or failure starts there every man is a product of his dominant thought thoughts are powerful they have both creative abilities and destructive capabilities Proverbs 23, verse 7, for as he thinks in his heart, so is he. Proverbs 4, 23, keep your heart with all diligence, for out of it spring the issues of life. Do you want to have life? Then keep your mind with all diligence. The next thing the devil attacks is the body. Satan attacks the human body to dishonor God who made us in his image to destabilize the believer and kill his purpose on earth. Job was attacked mentally, physically, and materially. Genesis 1.27, so God created man in his own image. In the image of God, he created him male and female. He created them. Job 2.7, so Satan went out from the presence of the Lord and struck Job with painful boils from the soul of his foot to the crown of his head. Job 3, 25 to 26. For the thing I greatly feared has come upon me, and what I dreaded has happened to me. I'm not at ease, nor am I quiet. I have no rest, for trouble comes. The reason trouble comes is sometimes when you open up your mind to accept the possibility of crisis. Shut your mind to failure. Shut your mind to destruction. Shut your mind. Let your mind agree with God. Because when trouble comes, trouble tries to take the rest that God has promised you. John chapter 10 verse 10. The thief does not come except to steal and to kill and to destroy. I have come that they may have life and that they may have it more abundantly. Do you think Jesus failed in his mission? Do you think Jesus will ever fail? Why did Jesus come? So that team members, so that you and I can have life. And how, what type of life? Cheap life, quality life, abundant life, prosperous life, healthy life, a life of favor, a life of understanding, a life that overcomes every trial. Hallelujah. And the next thing the devil attacks is your possession. The enemy attacked Job's material possessions the way he attacked Apostle Paul's ship. Concerning Apostle Paul, and this was what happened to them, for them to get to the place that they got. Acts chapter 27, verse 44. And the rest, some on boats, and some on parts of the ship, and so it was that they all escaped safely to land. You know, when the devil strikes... And if you have a vision, even if your, your vision is shattered, there's always something you must hold on to to escape the wiles of the devil. When the ship got broken, everything got broken. 
The master plan got broken. The comfort got broken. The direction was broken. Material things broken. Food stuff broken. How did they get to safety? They held on to pieces of wood. Before you throw in towel, before you throw in the towel of your business, your business may have been broken, but hold on to the dream you once had. Before you give up the dream and you, 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 you say, this is the marriage God gave to me and you're having crisis. Before you go your separate way, hold on to the love you once shared. Maybe your business is not doing well. Hold on to what God told you and you will get to safety. Before you throw in the towel and say, I don't know how my life is going to look like. Hold on to the promises of God's word concerning your health and you will get to safety. Back to the scripture, our text. Apostle Paul made fire. The fire has a funny way of revealing things that the human eyes cannot see. The fire represents the activities of the Holy Spirit. The fire which symbolizes the Holy Spirit can expose the hidden vipers within and around us. The enemy within you is more dangerous than the one outside. Don't be scared of the enemy outside. You should be scared of the enemy within. You should be more careful of the enemy within. The enemy within is your vices that the devil can use against you. When bad things happen to us, most times people expect us to perish. That's the human nature, the crab mentality. No matter how tough your trial is, God will never abandon you. The viper within symbolizes the works of the flesh. The viper within symbolizes the kind of nature of human beings. The viper within repre represents the, the potential seed of the devil that tries to manifest in your life. Paul said, oh wretched man that I am. The things I ought not to do, I find myself doing. And the things I ought to do, I do not see myself doing those things. Who will deliver me from the wretchedness of this body? Who will de deliver me from the wretchedness of this body? That's why you can't put your trust in the flesh. Because the flesh is going to fail you. Paul said, I sought the Lord three times. I saw him three times. I told him, take away this thorn from our flesh. The thorn is that thing that does not glorify God. The thorn is that thing that causes you distress, that causes you to, to go through a manner of distress. God told Paul, 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 my grace is sufficient for you. That is why the Bible tells me, live a spiritually fervent life. Because we know that the devil is called Beelzebub, Lord of the Flies. And I know that when there is heat and there is fire, flies don't even go around that place. It is only when the thing is cold that the flies begin to patch around. If the devil is afflicting you with all manner of disease, if the devil is afflicting you with all manner of depression, check your spiritual life. The fervency is probably very cold. Quench not the spirit. Pray fervently. Pray without ceasing. Pray until something happens. Quench not the spirit. Some of you, your prayer life is too cold. That is why the devil is messing around your business, messing around your mind, messing around your home, messing around your family, messing around everything that concerns you. It is try time to tell the devil enough is enough. Shake it up. Shake him out of your life. Shake him out of your business. Shake him out of your home. Shake the devil out of everything that concerns your life. You can't mess with the viper within. It hides. It can hide for one year. It can hide for five years. It can hide. But one day, the viper is going to manifest. David came from a lineage where they had sexual problems. The great-great-grandmother of David was a prostitute. So he didn't know he had a viper within. That DNA of sexual immorality. And one glorious day, a day when kings go to war. You know, the, the viper always wants to manifest when 
you are at the peak of your life. Have you not noticed? Men, they created career, all good. They were doing all well. Then at the peak of the career, at the peak, the, the viper within manifested. Scandal, scandal, scandal. Presidential ambition destroyed. Governorship ambition destroyed. Congressional ambition destroyed. Tame and destroy the viper within. Don't feed that viper. Shake it out. And that glorious day, a time when kings go to war and David refused to go to war, saw this woman having a bath and the viper manifested. That was the lowest point of the life of David. When Paul put on the fire, it was the fire that revealed the viper that fastened itself around him. And what did Paul do? He held on to the viper. He shook it out. Whatever God has not planted in your life shall be uprooted. I declare that everything God has not planted in your life, manifesting, wanting to put you down at an appointed time, today are destroyed in the mighty name of Jesus. And most times, humans are so wicked that they prefer bad news rather than good news. Tell them Bishop Cardin is working on miracles in the name of God. They won't share it on Facebook. Tell them Bishop Cardin built one of the best cathedrals in the Philippines. No one wants to like it on Facebook. But put up a story and a gossip. Scandal, scandal, scandal. I tell you, it's going to sell 200 times per second, a thousand times per second, a million times per second. People always expect bad things to happen to good people. And the Bible tells me that sometimes when these things happen, people begin to judge you. They began to judge Paul. They said, this man is a murderer. How come? This thing happened to him. Bad things sometimes happen to good people, not because the good people are bad, but because God wants to use the bad things. He can use the good, the bad, and the ugly to carry out his purpose in the life of people. And they were looking. They didn't seek medical help. I didn't read anywhere in the Bible that they, they went there to, to, to try to treat Paul. They were looking at him, expecting him to die. Many of you are doing well. Your enemies and your opponents are expecting you to fail. Many of your marriages are doing well. Your opponents are expecting the marriages to fail. Many people, including some people who call themselves believers, are expecting team to fail. But I came with good news to tell you that they will expect and instead of your failure, you will be promoted. They will expect you to die, but you will live long. They will expect you to crash, but you will continue to glorify God through success upon success upon success. Your best is yet to come. No wonder David said, my enemy do not laugh at me. <laughs> Because when you think I'm done, I will come out. The Bible tells me that even if a righteous man falls seven times, he shall surely rise again. I prophesy into your destiny that every one of you under the influence of the sound of my voice, you will overcome your problems, you will overcome your trials, you will overcome your pain, you will overcome your limitation, and my God will lift you up and you will stand before kings. You will go from glory to glory. If you believe that, shout hallelujah. And when Peter had come to himself, he said, Now I know for certain that the Lord has sent his angel and has delivered me from the hand of Herod and from all the expectation of the Jewish people. Every expectation of evil designed to disgrace and cause shame to your family. I declare that it shall be for your own good. What the devil turned around for evil, my God will turn it around for good. When the enemy attacks, we must learn how to repel the attacks by exercising our faith. Faith is never passive, but always active. 
James 4, 7 tells me, therefore submit to God, resist the devil, and you flee from you. How do you resist the devil? You can't resist the devil successfully if you don't submit to God. James 2, 17 tells also, faith by itself, if it does not have works, is dead. So you must always act on your faith. I'll show you some ways how to overcome the enemy. One, cast down demonic imaginations. To achieve this, you must cast out the viper within into the fire. Matthew 12, 34. Brood of vipers, how can you, being evil, speak good things? For out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaks. So you must cast out everything that is negative in your heart. Cast it out. Matthew 13, 38. The field is the world. The good seeds are the sons of the kingdom. Tell your neighbor, say, I am the good seed. The field is the world. The good seeds are the sons of the kingdom. But the tares are the sons of the wicked one. 2 Corinthians 10, 4, 6. For the weapons of our warfare are not carnal, but mighty in God for pulling down strongholds, casting down arguments, and every high thing that exalts itself against the knowledge of God, bringing every thought into captivity to the obedience of Christ and being ready to punish all disobedience when your obedience is fulfilled. This is the reason sometimes Christians cannot tell the devil to stop with the devil complying because you are not living in obedience. Obedience gives you the right to punish and to stop every spiritual disobedience arrayed against you. Then two, never complain in your trials. God hates it. Proverbs 18.21, death and life are in the power of the tongue. And those who love it will eat its fruit. The people of Israel were gifted and were graced by God. But they continued to complain in all the, all the crises they went through. They forgot about the God that gave them food. They forgot about the God that provided everything for them until God got angry and God told them, As surely as I live, I'll do to you that which I've heard you say. What do you speak concerning your life? What are your confessions? Three, offer praises to God. I know it's not easy to praise God when things are not going right. I've been there many times. I've lost loved ones. But in my deep pain, I still praise God. What praise does is, in the midst of crisis, it triggers God's grace in your life. It makes you want to rely more on God and less on yourself. Psalm 33 verse 1. Rejoice in the Lord, O you righteous, for praise from the upright is beautiful. Say it is a beautiful thing to praise God. James 1 Two to four. My brethren, count it all joy. Say all joy. God didn't say we should rejoice for bad things. He said in the midst of bad things, you can rejoice. When you're having an argument with your spouse, do you count it all joy? Come on. Lift those holy hands. When your friends and loved ones some of them cheat you, rip you off some millions, couple of millions. You can't eat all joy. Or you say, God, let the whole world just end. Let's all go home. But the Bible tells me in the book of James 1, 2 to 4, my brethren, can't eat all joy when you fall into various trials, knowing that the testing of your faith produces patience. But let patience have its perfect work that you may be perfect and complete, lacking nothing. Philippians 4, 4. Rejoice in the Lord always. Again, I'll say rejoice. 
What did you hear from the Bible? What did you read from the Bible? Rejoice sometimes. Rejoice once a week. Rejoice twice a month. Rejoice always. Even when the news is bad, rejoice always. In other words, to rejoice is a product of your choice. To rejoice is to trigger the spirit of joy in you to affect the external positively. Four, endure hardship as a good soldier of Jesus Christ. Is there anyone in this place who is not a soldier of Jesus Christ? You can't just say, but it's just an expression Hyperbole, no, we are literal soldiers of Christ. That is why in team, I always tell people that you are also in the military. How many of you have gone through military service in this place? Okay, one hand there, Pastor Sean. How many? Just a few. Thank God for some of us who went through military training. Thank God that training has defined my life. If the government permits it, we are going to have a team training camp where we are going to call the military to teach team members how to be true soldiers of Christ. Hallelujah. Because when you are in the military, you won't have a weight problem. You'll be praying that God, oh God, please add some flesh. When I was at the camp, I thought I was going to be Mr. Skeleton of the Year. Because you won't have enough time to eat. It's always exercise. You're burning calories and your mind becomes very sharp. And if you've not been trained like a military person, it's going to be difficult for you to endure hardship. Second Timothy 2.3 You therefore must endure hardship as a good soldier of Jesus Christ. Enduring hardship as a Christian is a must. Say it's a must. Because if you don't make it a must, you are going to complain against God. Then five, use your authority as a believer to bind the enemy. Victory is won when you put on the whole armor of God. How many of you have, have the whole armor of God in this place? I hear Bishop Cardin's uh, business, they sell an, uh, the armor of God. So if you're looking for an armor of God... Go to a star shop. You get, you get more, lots of it. Hallelujah. The Bible tells me in 1 Corinthians chapter 4, verse 20, For the kingdom of God is not in word, but in power. Putting on the whole armor of God gives you the power of God. Guarantees the power of God. Psalm 149, verse 6 to 9. Let the high praises of God be in their mouth and a two-edged sword in the hand to execute vengeance on the nations and the punishments on the peoples to bind their kings with chains and the nobles with fetters of iron to execute on them the written judgment. This honor have all his saints. Praise the Lord. Who is the executioner in our midst? Oh, come on. Who is the executioner? You are. Maybe you should write a book titled The Executioner. We were called to execute the judgment written against the nations. Under the laws of God, when a people begin to misbehave, drought is supposed to follow, hunger, lack of rain. Did you hear Elijah say, God, please shut the windows of heaven. Did he say that? He said, as long as I live, as long as I live, there's not going to be rain or dew in the next three years. Why? Because he wanted to punish Israel for turning away from God. Elijah was a man of like passion. Every one of you, you have the same power to execute judgment, not only judgment, 
just as you have the power to execute judgment, you also have the same power to bless nations. Hallelujah. But today, instead of judging nations, we are going to bless them. I bless the Republic of the Philippines in the mighty name of Jesus. We put an end to COVID-19 in the name of Jesus. We put an end to premature death in the name of Jesus. I bless the Republic of the Philippines and I declare that your prosperity will come from the north, east, west and south in the name of Jesus. I bless Nigeria. I bless Israel. I bless America. I bless Asia. I bless Africa. I bless Europe. I bless North America. I bless South America. I bless Australia. I bless Antarctica. I bless the whole world and I bless believers. If you believe that, shout hallelujah. Then six, discover the purpose and benefit of your trial. There is gain in every pain that God allows. A great door of ministry was opened for Paul in the island of Malta after his crisis. The islanders also supported him materially. The Bible testifies that when Paul did not die, they said he was a God and he provided for all his needs. I declare that since you've come out of your crisis, everything you lost, God will restore it sevenfold in the mighty name of Jesus. When Joseph went through his crisis, this was what he said in Genesis chapter 50 verse 20. But as for you, you meant evil against me, but God meant it for good in order to bring it about as it is. This day to save many people alive. I declare that all your crises, the crises that God has permitted in your life, before this year gets to a certain extent, before the year ends, you will recover and you will testify in the mighty name of Jesus. And finally, forget about the past and move on with your life. You can't possess the future by clinging on to the past. Hebrews 12, 1 to 2. Therefore, we also, since we're surrounded by so great a cloud of witnesses, let us lay aside every weight and the sin we so easily ensnares us, and let us run with endurance the race that is set before us, looking unto Jesus, the author and finisher of our faith, who for the joy that was set before him endured the cross, despising the shame, and has sat down at the right hand of the throne of God. Philippians 3, 13-14. Brethren, tell your neighbor, say, sister or brother. Brethren, I do not count myself to have apprehended, but one thing I do, forgetting those things which are behind and reaching forward to those things which are ahead, I press toward the goal for the prize of the upward call of God in Christ Jesus. Stand to your feet. I know this year has been tough. I know this, this year has been rough. From 2020 to 2021, it's been tough. Businesses shutting down. People falling sick. Some, unfortunately, lost their lives. But don't hold on to the memories of those things. Don't allow the tragedy of pain to deprive you of the beautiful vision of tomorrow. There are beautiful things ahead of you. Your best is yet to come. Your best is yet to come. Some people are already saying this is the end time. Armageddon has come. The Antichrist is already coming. No. Your best is yet to come. Do you know when Jesus is going to appear? When men say peace, 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 peace. When it looks as if everything is okay. Jesus is not going to come when there is so much chaos now. It is when men begin to give themselves out, marriages has increased, people are so prosperous, they want to marry that Jesus Christ is going to show up. Nobody is getting married under COVID-19. This crisis is meant to be overcome. So don't just take up your, some of you, some people are even thinking of buying casket and preparing themselves. No, fight fight. Don't give up on your dreams. The best is yet to come. Lift up those hands. Father, in the name of Jesus, I lift your sons and daughters before you. We know that weeping may endure through the night, but joy comes in the morning. 
they may have been shipwrecked. They may have encountered all manner of storms. Just as you brought Apostle Paul and the rest of his crew to safety. And they were honored in the midst of lack. Lord, I pray that you honor everyone in our midst in the name of Jesus. Let the gates of finance, let the gates of life, let the gates of health, let the gates of goodness be opened unto them in the name of Jesus. And I declare that every tragedy that the devil has brought your way today by the mystery of the word of God comes to an end. Receive life, receive favor, receive promotion. And I declare that you shall not die, but live to declare the glory of God. And if you're watching me online and you say, man of God, I want to be part of this process, the first thing you need to do is to confess Jesus Christ as your personal Lord and Savior because he died and he can set you free. John 3, 16 tells me that for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whoever, it doesn't matter where you came from, whoever believes in him shall not perish but have everlasting life. So if you want to give your life to Jesus, you can say, Lord Jesus, I know you're the son of God. You died to set me free today. With my heart, I believe, and with my mouth, I confess. Cleanse me from all unrighteousness and become my personal Lord and Savior. If you pray that prayer, I want to welcome you to the greatest kingdom on earth, the kingdom where righteousness, peace, and love reigns. God bless you. And if you want to contact us, contact us on the screen below and worship with us. If you're in Metro Manila, you can visit us sometime. Or if you're, a good, if you're in, already in a good church, just stay where you are and get planted. If you are abroad, Look for a Bible-believing church and tell them that Bishop Tony said you should go there and worship God. God bless you.